Hi everyone. Welcome to benacademy.com. In this video, I like to explain how organic chemistry learning made simple. First of all, what is organic chemistry? The study of carbon compounds is known as organic chemistry. Example, alcohol, acid, hydrocarbon, etc. etc. When you were browsing through your textbook, you might have come across lots of formulas like this CH3, Bon, COOH. So its name is ethanoic acid. And CH3, Bon, CH2, Bon, O, Bon, CH2, Bon, CH3 is ethoxy ethane. So, like this, several compounds you would have come across in your textbook. You might have wondered, okay, what is this? How we can get these formulas? And how we can get these names? Should we memorize all of them? There are hundreds and hundreds of organic compounds. Is it possible to memorize everything? Uh, first of all, is it ne uh, necessary to memorize everything? Not at all. So there are some specific rules how to learn and remember organic chemistry. Organic chemistry is so simple and fun provided if you learn certain basics and some techniques to learn. So this is what I intend to teach in this video. Hope you will enjoy. Okay, first of all, what are the basic things one should know before start learning the IUPAC rules to name the organic compound. So what is that IUPAC rule? International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry. See wherever you go in this universe and you have to follow the same rule to name any compound. And first of all, what are the basic things you should know in organic chemistry? First thing what we should know is what are the elements present in organic compound? In general, there are very few compounds, uh, uh, I mean, very few elements present in organic compounds. They are uh, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and halogens. See the halogens can be chlorine, bromine or iodine, it can be anything. These are the few elements present in organic chemistry. First of all we should know them and second thing we should know the symbol and valencies. Already you know the symbols, uh, C is carbon and H is hydrogen, O is oxygen and X is a general symbol for all the halogens, chlorine, bromine and iodine. Chlorine is Cl, Bromine is Br, Iodine is I. I am sure you will be knowing all these things already. Now what are the valencies of these elements? Again we all know what is the valency of carbon? The valency of carbon is 4, the valency of hydrogen is 1, the valency of oxygen is 2 and the valency of all the halogens are also 1. And what is the third thing we should know? The name of the various number of carbons. See if the number of carbon is 1, how to name it. If the number of carbons are 2 in organic compound, how to name it. If the number of carbons are 3, how to name it. Or you can learn up to 10, but for 10 standard, I think up to 5, it's more than enough. If the number of carbon is 1, then it is known as meth. M-E-T-H, meth. A number of carbons are 2, then it is known as eth. Eth or eth, this is meth or meth and 3. If the number of carbons are 3 in a compound, then it is known as prop. If the number of carbons are 4, then it is known as but. If the number of carbons are 5, then it is known as pent. Now what's the next thing you should know? 
the types of bonds present between carbon atoms. So there are three types of bond can be present between any two carbon atoms. So they are the first one. It can be a single bond between two carbon atoms. There is only one bond between a carbon and carbon. Or it can be a double bond between two carbons. Or it can be a triple bond between two carbons. It can be any one of them. And the last thing what you should know is the functional groups present in an organic compound. So what are the functional groups? For example, uh, for alcohol, the functional group is OH, bond OH. The functional group for aldehyde is bond CHO. The functional group for acid is bond COOH. The functional group for ether is R bond O bond R. So like that it goes on. So these are the specific group in a particular uh, compound which determines uh, to which category or which type of compound they belong to. If there is a OH group, it is known as hydroxyl group, then the compound is called alcohol. If there is a CHO group, then the compound belongs to aldehyde. If there is a COOH group, then this type of compounds containing this group is called acid. So this group is called carboxyl group and if oxygen is bonded on both sides with any number of carbons then it is known as ether. So like that there are several types we will see them in detail later. Now what are the types of bonds present in organic compounds? So that already we have seen just now. Uh, that is there are three types of bonds can be present between two carbon in any organic compound. It may be a single bond or it may be a double bond or it may be a triple bond. And these are the three types of bonds between any two carbon atoms in organic compounds. Now what are the valencies of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen and halogens which already you have learned. The valency of the valency of carbon is 4, the valency of hydrogen is 1 and the valency of uh, oxygen is 2 and the valency of all the halogens like chlorine, bromine, iodine for everything the valency is 1. Now why should we know this? How it helps in writing the structural formula of an organic compound? Why we should know the valency? In what way it is going to help us? For example, uh, let us take any compound say CH3 COOH See, you may not be knowing what it is right now <coughs> Just in order to explain what is the use of knowing the valency I have taken this example So this is an acid because it is having COOH group as functional group it is having COOH group as functional group Why there is a single bond here? Why not there be a double bond or triple bond? Why there should be only a single bond? So all these bonds determines or all these bonds are determined by the valency. For example, the skeleton structure of uh, this acid is C. See, let, let me write now. Let me write it here. C bond COOH. So the COOH should can be written like this: C double bond O, single bond O, single bond H. And why it is written so? See, each and every bond represents the valency of the element surrounding it. Okay, for example, you take this last one, hydrogen. The valency of hydrogen is 1. Therefore, it can have only one single bond. It cannot have more, it cannot have less. For example, you take this oxygen. It is having two bonds, one this side and one on the other side. For example, you take this oxygen, two bonds are here. So, oxygen can be having two double uh, I mean two single bonds or one double bond so that the valency 2 is satisfied for example you take this carbon this having one valency here and two valencies here see all together three one more valency is left that's why I written bond COOH now this carbon is bonded to another carbon 
Now here all the valences of each and every element is satisfied. For example, you take this carbon. How many bonds are there? Only one. Only one bond is there. How many more is required? Three more are required. Therefore, it is filled with three hydrogens. So because each hydrogen, see if you want to write it separately. So this is what you need to write. So this carbon needs three more valences. Therefore, you put three bonds and each bond is connected to a hydrogen atom. Okay, now the formula, if you write can, uh, everything together, you will get the formula as uh, you will get the formula CH3 and COOH. So this is CH3 and this is COOH. Now if you count the valency of each and every atom, the number of bonds will be equal to the valency of the atom. What are the names of the carbons according to its numbers? For example, if the compound is having only one carbon, then it is known as meth. Already I have told you. If the number of carbons are two, then it is known as eth. If the number of carbons are three, it is known as prop. If the number of carbons are four, it is called but. But it is pronounced as but. If the number of carbons are 5, it is pent. If the number of carbons are 6, it is hex. So you can easily remember hexagonal, which is having 6 angles, no? It's hexagonal. 6 is hex. If the number of carbons are 7, so hept, you can remember heptathelene. Hepta means 7. Okay. If the number of carbons are 8, so you know the you know the octopus which is having eight legs and then nine nanometer ten to the power minus nine. So for if the number of carbons are nine, it is known as non. And if the number of carbons are ten, decathlene. So you can easily remember deca. But uh, for a practical purpose, for learning purpose in ten standard, you need to know only the first five. So one carbon is called meth, two carbons are called eth, three carbons are called prop, four carbons are called but. And that's it. Hope you understood uh, the basics you should know before start learning organic chemistry.